Okay, so hi everyone. Today's class is going to be on the etiology of Parkinson's disease. So I'll be uploading my class on clinical features, diagnosis, treatment, and Parkinson's plus syndromes on Neuraxis Pro app. And I've also uploaded the notes for this class and all my previous classes on this app. I put the link in the description so you can go ahead and uh, access it over there. Now let's go into the class. Okay, now coming to the environmental factors. So an interesting environmental factor that is important for the exam is going to be MTPT. So MTPT stands for 1 methyl, 4 phenyl, 1 comma 2 comma 5 comma 6 tetrahydropyridine. So it's actually a toxic byproduct of a heroin like drug and it is a mitochondrial toxin. So what happens is it goes and gets oxidized to MPP plus in the central nervous system and selectively damages the dopaminergic neurons. The other toxins that you should remember are carbon monoxide and manganese. So these two are very very important for the exam. And interestingly, both carbon monoxide and manganese selectively involve the globus pallidus. Okay, they're going to selectively involve the globus pallidus. And they are more likely to cause atypical Parkinson's-like features. So they cause atypical Parkinson's-like features. So what is atypical, what is typical Parkinson's features, we'll discuss in the class in clinical features. The other toxins are going to be cyanide, hexane, methanol and carbon disulfide. Okay. And next, exposure to pesticides, rural living, farming and drinking well water. These are the other environmental risk factors. Now, very, very important. Coming to drug-induced Parkinson's. So, drug-induced Parkinson's is going to be the most common cause of secondary Parkinson's disease. And a very important class of drug that causes this is going to be your neuroleptic drugs or your antipsychotic drugs. Antipsychotic drugs. So the other drugs are going to be metoclopramide, that is an anti-emetic and prokinetic drug, tetrabenazine, calcium channel blockers like flunarazine and cinarazine, amiodrone and lithium. So don't forget the most common cause of secondary Parkinson's is going to be drug induced. Okay, the other causes are going to be tumors, stroke, normal pressure hydrocephalus and trauma. Alright, so what are the other neurodegenerative disorders that are associated with Parkinson's disease or can have Parkinson's like features? The top of the list is going to be Wilson's disease. So as its name suggests, that is hepatolenticular degeneration. So lenticular degeneration. So it causes Parkinson's disease. Next is Huntington's disease. So Huntington's disease usually does not cause Parkinson's like features. But we have a variant of Hunting uh, Huntington's disease that is a Westfall variant. Okay, remember Westfall variant is more common in children. So you can go ahead and look at the class on Huntington's disease on this channel. We've discussed in detail about Westfall variant over there. So Westfall variant is a variant of Huntington's disease that is more common in the pediatric population and presents with Parkinson's like features. And in spinal cerebral ataxias, your SCAR 3 is going to cause Parkinson's features. If you want to be more specific, type 1 SCAR 3. So type 1 SCAR 3 is going to have Parkinson's like features. Then Halliburton's Path disease. So this is important for the exam. It's an MCQ question. So the old term is Halvardin's Path disease. So now it's known as pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration. So this comes under a spectrum of disorders that are known as neurodegenerative disorders with brain ion accumulation. Other causes are going to be fragile X associated ataxia tremor Parkinsonism and Alzheimer's disease with Parkinsonism. Okay. The other one that is important for the exam is an MCQ question that is DOPA responsive dystonia. So this is because of a mutation in the GTP cyclohydrolase 1 gene and it causes very early onset Parkinson's, usually less than 20 years of age and it's because of decreased synthesis of DOPA and dopamine. So it's going to cause both dystonia as well as Parkinsonism and both of them are going to respond very well to levodopa because here the problem is with the impaired manufacture of DOPA and dopamine. So if you're going to replace it with levodopa, both the dystonia and Parkinsonism is going to resolve. Okay, now coming to the genetic causes. So we have SNCA mutations, which is known as PARC1. Okay, so each mutation is known as PARC1, PARC2, PARC3. So we look into that right now. So SNCA mutations are very rare. Okay, they are very rare. Just remember for the exam, it's also known as PARC1. So you're going to have an earlier age of onset, faster progression of motor signs, faster progression of motor signs, which are levodopa responsive, early motor fluctuations, prominent non-motor features, and other features like dementia, central hypoventilation, myoclonus, and autonomic dysfunction. So this is about SNCA mutations. Next we have glucocerebrosidase gene mutation. So I think many of us 
are acquainted to this it is the mutation which is seen in gaucher's disease so the patient is going to have a homozygous mutation they're going to present as gaucher's disease but if they're going to have an heterozygous mutation they're at increased risk of developing parkinson's disease so basically glucose cerebrosidase is an lysosomal enzyme which helps in the clearance of misfolded proteins okay now coming to park 2 so we discuss park 1 that is snca okay so you can have a look over here so snca is park 1 snca is park 1 park 2 is going to be our park in mutations this is very very important mcq because this is the most common cause of autosomal recessive and early onset parkinson's disease so the most common cause of early onset parkinson's disease is going to be park in mutation it's because of impaired ubiquitination so it's a slowly progressive disease it responds generally well to anti parkinson's treatment and there's going to be prominent dystonia other features are going to be hyperreflexia autonomic dysfunction sensory axonal neuropathy and neuropsychiatric features so there's one mcq point over here don't forget park in mutation is park 2 and it's the most common cause of both autosomal recessive and early onset Parkinson's disease. Next, we're going to have PARC3. Just remember one point over here, PARC3 is associated with prominent dementia. It's usually late onset. Usually the onset is around 61 years of age. Then we have PARC5. Okay, so remember usually it's going to be autosomal recessive, except two. One of them is going to be PARC5, which is autosomal dominant. This is because of a mutation in a de-ubiquitating enzyme that is UCHL1 gene. Just remember this for the exam. Now coming to PARC6, okay, so this is autosomal recessive, it's an early onset Parkinson's disease, it's because of pink 1 gene mutation, okay, it's an early onset Parkinson's, usually the fourth decade, it has a benign course and it's associated with levodopa induced dyskinesias. Next we have PARC7, which is an autosomal recessive Parkinson's disease, it's because of DJ1 gene mutations. The extra features that you have to remember over here, they can have blepharospasm, leg dystonia and anxiety and sometimes it can also be associated with a Parkinson's dementia ALS complex. Okay, now coming to a very important question for the exam that is PARC8. This is an autosomal dominant Parkinson's disease with incomplete inheritance. It's because of mutation in the LRKK2. So this is very important because it is the most common cause of familial Parkinson's disease and the most common cause of familial adult onset Parkinson's disease. So remember what is the most common cause of most common cause of early onset Parkinson's disease. The other question you should remember is what is the most common cause of familial but adult onset Parkinson's disease. So for adult onset is going to be our PARC8. It's going to be our PARC8 that is LRKK2 mutation. This is the most common cause of familial adult onset. But what's the most common cause of early Parkinson's disease? It's going to be your PARCIN mutations. Your PARCIN mutations. So don't forget PARCIN mutation uh, most common cause of early onset Parkinson's disease. But the most common cause of familial adult onset Parkinson's disease is going to be PARC8. So don't forget this. It's a very, very important question. So the most, there are seven different mutations in this LRKK2 gene and the most common is going to be the PG2019S which is common in Ashkenazi Jews and North African Arabs. So you're going to have similar clinical features as sporadic Parkinson's disease but the extra clinical feature that you should remember is this is going to be leg tremor. Very, very important MCQ. So if you're going to have leg tremor in PARC8, that is LRKK mutation. It has a benign course. It responds well to levodopa. Extra features are going to be dementia, hallucinations, autonomic dysfunction and amyotrophy. So I think I've covered most of the important points. Thank you.